All right, um, this is going to be a demonstration um, on the 3D animated GIF, how to make one from a stereo view. So what I've done is I've gone online and I've downloaded some stereo views. And there's one in particular I like that works pretty well for this project, which is one of a butterfly. So I'm going to drag that over to Photoshop. You could do this in other programs, but uh, we use Photoshop. And we're going to incorporate the animation um, capabilities in Photoshop, but you can also do that in Image Ready if you're in an earlier version of Photoshop. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is take the Marquee tool and I'm going to select one of the two images, and I'll just choose the right one, and I'm going to make a new layer out of that, out of that selection. As you can see now, it's popped right on top, and I'm just going to shift and um, get on the Move tool, shift and arrow over, arrow left, and line it up right on top of the lower image. These are two separate angles of the same shot. Oops, went a little too far. Shot with a stereo view camera, so approximately 6.5 centimeters of parallax or space um, between the two images. Now I'm going to take the crop tool and just crop this down to the uh, two layers of the, of the two images. Okay, so you can see there's two layers here. And we're going to start with just the bottom one on. I'm going to go to the um, window and open up the animation window. Um, if you don't have CS4, I believe is the first time with this, um, you can go to Image Ready in the earlier versions. Maybe it's in CS2. Um, in any case, works the same way. So you can see uh, right off it defaults to the first frame, and the first frame is going to represent what I have selected. So it's the bottom layer. If I put the top layer on, you see that changes in that frame. So anyway, we're going to stick with um, first frame of a two-frame animation being the, the bottom background layer. I'm going to change the duration to other, and I'm going to type in 0.13 seconds. I found from uh, doing a few tests that this was a good uh, frame rate. Also down here, it, you'll notice it says forever. It usually defaults to once or three times. You can set it to whatever you want. Forever means it'll just continuously flicker or play the animation of the two flickering images. All right, so we have the first frame. We need a second frame with the top image. I'm going to click this to duplicate that frame. And now when we're in that frame, I'm going to change what's being displayed to the top image. And because it's full opacity, it'll just block the image below it. I don't actually need to turn it off. So now you see if we click on the first frame, we have the bottom layer. The second frame, we have the top layer. And if we click the play button, it'll play endlessly as the two GIFs I'm sorry, it's the two layers of the Photoshop image, and you will see fairly dramatically, I think, with this image, um, the, the 3D illusion that your brain sort of superimposes over the two separate images flickering back and forth. All right, so we have that. I think that looks pretty good. Let's look at it on a nice black background. It's a little more dramatic. Okay, let's go back to where we were, and let's stop this. And now we need to convert it into a GIF. Right now it's a PSD, basically, or it's an unfinished image. It can be, if we were just to save this, it would be a PSD image. Um, but we want to optimize it as an animated GIF, to, uh, playable on the web and in other players like QuickTime. So I'm just going to go to, um, sorry, File, uh, Save for Web and Devices. And this brings up the same window you get if you're an image ready, if you just simply go to Optimize. Um, so this is the optimization window, and all the presets here for GIF, 256 colors, it looks fine. And, um, and I've done this before, and I've been pretty happy with the results. So I'm just going to save it like this, and I'm going to call it Butterfly uh, 3D GIF, and we'll put today's date on it, 218, um, just because I've done a few of them. I'm putting it in my animated stereo views window. And it's done there. So let's actually go find it. Here's animated stereo views. And here's the one that we just made. And we want to preview that in a browser is probably a good way to look at it. So I'm just going to open Chrome. I'm going to come back to this folder and just drag this into the Chrome browser. And there you see the finished um, animation displaying in a web browser. So I think that looks pretty good. Uh, it's a nice image to work with. The uh, actual photograph itself it was fairly dramatic, two dimension or 2D. So uh, when you bring it into this um, flicker mode, it actually stands out. And the background looks fairly far behind the, the foreground image of the, of the uh, left wing. I'm going to open up one other that I did previously just to show you how I, I'm 
another image works. This is um, a very old photograph, um, 19th, late 19th century Chinese image, and uh, it's also hand tinted. It was a black and white stereo view. Same thing, two images side by side, which I cut and put together. And, and other people have on the web also uh, converted this particular image into an animated GIF. So there's a lot of this going on. I'll put links into the blog. Uh, there's a ton of great work like this out there, and there are lots of great images to play with. And as you can see, it hardly takes any time at all to, um, to create one of these. So anyway, good luck. Uh, I hope you have fun doing this.